is problem 5.4 of uh, the book Mechanical Vibrations from Rao, 6th edition. And we have two mass systems that consist of a piston of mass M1 connected to two elastic springs that move inside a tube as shown in the figure, and they move only horizontal. Then we have a pendulum of length L that has a mass M2 at the end and is connected to the piston as shown. We like to derive the equation of motion of the system in terms of x1, which is the motion of the piston, and theta, which is the rotation of the pendulum. We will start by doing the kinematics of this problem. So the piston moves in a horizontal direction and the pendulum is attached to that mass. So if we name A the piston, we know that the acceleration of that piston will be x1 two dots in a, 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 a x direction, which is i. Then let's calculate the acceleration of point G, which is the mass of the pendulum. We use our relative motion equation and we know the acceleration of point A. Let me write here what are the distance between point A and point G, which is L cosine of theta in vertical direction and L sine of theta in horizontal direction. So we have x1 two dots in I plus alpha is theta two dots in K, positive rotation times the distance between relative from j, g, g to a. So I will write this equation and do my cross product between alpha and the distance, and the other is already done for 2D, the simplification for problems in planar motion. Let me write down the results once I do the cross product, k times i is j, i k times j is negative i. And then I write the last term that is already in vector form. I don't have to do any product. So let me write this down in terms of the acceleration in I. Well, I will put all the components I together, which are these three components. This is in I direction, and the ones in J direction are theta to those L times sine of theta plus theta dot square L cosine of theta. So I have the acceleration of the particle at the end of the pendulum in X and in Y. Now that I have done the kinematics, let me go to the kinetics. For that, I will do the free body diagram of mass 1. I have the forces of the spring. I'm moving to the right, so my forces of the spring go to the left. I have the normal force and the weight will not contribute to the motion. And then I have the tension of the pendulum. The kinetic diagram of this mass is very easy. I have only acceleration in the horizontal direction, which is my mass 1 times x1 two dots. So I have forces in x and external forces equals to kinetic forces. I have my forces as a spring, and I have a component of the tension in the x direction. That will be equals to my kinetic forces, which is mass times acceleration. From here I can get my first equation is mass times acceleration of the mass plus k1 plus k2 times displacement minus p sine of theta. But I have to find that tension. And for that I have to do the free body diagram of the mass at the end of the pendulum. I will do the free body diagram and the kinetic diagram. The free body diagram will be the tension and my weight. And the kinetic diagram will be the mass time acceleration that I already found when I did the kinematic analysis.
if I add forces in X for that mass, I have the tension sine of theta equals to my mass times acceleration in X direction. This is, then here I can get the tension of the tension sine theta. Remember that I am doing, this is mass 2, I am doing the uh, forces in the mass at the end of the tendon. I will substitute t, t sine of theta into my equation that I found, we are, I will call it equation 1, and so equation 2 into equation 1 will be equal to, I have the mass 1 times x1 plus this at the two springs and the displacement, and I substitute T sine of theta by the expression I just found. This last term, which has the velocity squared and sine of theta, is a nonlinear term. We will, for my, for small displacement, I will ignore that term, and sine of theta will become theta, and cosine of theta becomes one. So I will write my linearized equations as for m1 plus m2 x1 2 dots plus x k1 k2 times the displacement k plus m2 theta 2 dots l and cosine of theta becomes 1 and that will be equals to c. This is my first Equation. I'm not taking into consideration this term because it's non-linear term. Now, for the second equation, I will do a moment at respect to A. And moment respect to A, A being the end of the pendulum, which is the mass A, or piston moving horizontally, right? So please recall, I am just bringing out the formula sheet for my equations of motion. I will use this equation right here, which is for a moving point. So I have two terms. The first term includes the rotation and the second part includes the displacement of point A. So that will be my external moments will be equals to the inertia respect to point A times angular acceleration times the distance between the point G and point A cross mass times acceleration of point A. So the Inertia respect to point A will be equals to, well, let me write first the external forces. The external forces will be the weight is the only force that produces moment respect to point A. The tension does not produce moment respect to, to point A. The mass moment of inertia will be mass 2 L squared theta 2 dots and that's in positive in k direction and then I have the distance between point A and point G which is L sine of theta in I minus L cosine of theta in J cross the mass 2 acceleration of point A. Let me do this cross product and write my equation And this gives me already the second equation. Let me write that down, everything in the left side of the equation. And this is the equation for the pendulum. Second equation of motion. 
Let me write this equation in matrix form. We will have the mass matrix multiplied by the vector of acceleration. And we will have the stiffness matrix multiplied by the vector of displacement. And in this case, this will be equals to zero because we don't have external forces. So my mass matrix, I will combine these two equations. The first term multiplies x to dot in the first equation. The second term multiplies theta to dot in the first equation. And then I will go x1, uh, k1 plus k2. That multiply the displacement in x. I don't have any this any term that multiplies theta. So let me go for the second equation. And as you see, the matrix are positive in the diagonal and are symmetric, both of the matrix. With that, I can calculate the natural frequency of the system by doing the eigenvalue problem. And remember, for that, I have to calculate the determinant of the matrix K minus lambda M. Where the matrix K is the stiffness matrix and the matrix M is the mass matrix. If I do this determinant, I will have the matrix K1, K, the first term minus lambda M, in the first term, then I have 0 minus lambda M2L, and in the, here also the same term, and then I have M2LG minus lambda ML2M2L squared. So if I do that determinant, I can get this polynomial. Let me write that down, which is cross the product of the first term with the fourth term and then the diagonal the other diagonal, right? Equals zero. So if I do those products, I will get my character, uh, my polynomial will give me the lambda. Let me write that polynomial. I have to do the distributive multiplication. When I solve for lambda, I can get the first natural frequency square and lambda 2, my second solution will be natural frequency 2 square. And since we don't have any values at this point, k1 and k2, this will be the solution of this problem where we analyze the kinematics, then the kinetics allow us to find the two equations of motion, we put them in matrix form, and then finally we found the natural frequencies of the problem.